So turning your Bibles to Luke chapter 6, verses 47 to 49. So tonight's sermon is, I call it, Foundations of Life. And I'm going to touch on a few things that I think the Lord's laid on my heart throughout the week and time prior. But yeah, I think Foundations of Life is a fitting title. So Luke chapter 6, verses 47 to 49. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house and digged deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was, found, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. So what does that house represent? It could represent several things. It could represent your life, your legacy, your testimony. That house is what you are building each day of your life, whether you know it or not. And whatever house you're building, you're going to have to live in it. So what foundation are you building your house upon? Are you building your house upon the rock, the Lord Jesus Christ? Or are you building it on the earth, on the temporal, fragile things of this life? What kind of house are you building? Are you building a mansion, a bunker, or a shed? <laughs> so, some verses on the rock. So David speaking in 2 Samuel 22 verse 2. And he said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. My high tower and my refuge. My saviour, thou savest me from violence. Psalm 62 verse 6. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defence, I shall not be moved. Romans 9.33 As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offence, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. And 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 Sorry, we're jumping around a lot. but and, and all did drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. So I had to think, I had to think about why, why is the Lord referred to as the rock? Why is he the rock? Why is the Lord our rock? Well, there's a few things I came up with. The Lord is immovable. He is immovable. He will not move from his promises. He's not fickle like we are. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Because he's not movable, nothing can or ever will separate us from the Lord if we are saved. Romans chapter 8 verse 38, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And if you, he is immovable, he gives us eternal security. If the Lord promises to save us, unlike all the other religions, he will save us and save us to the utmost. It's eternal security, it's a key doctrine for us Christians. John chapter 10 verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I will give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. He is immovable. Why else is the Lord our rock? He's permanent is eternal. You think about the ancient rock formations and things the scientists like to talk about and all these old stones that have been here for thousands of years. The Lord's, the Bible calls the Lord the Ancient of Days in Daniel chapter 7 verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the Ancient of Days did sit whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like a, the fiery flame His wheels as burning fire. Why else is the Lord our rock? He's rock solid. (laughs) 
Hebrews 13 verse 5, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. You can lean on the Lord. He's, he's solid. You can trust him. He'll never change. He doesn't move. And going back to what I was saying about the Lord being permanent, and ancient than all of the mountains and the rocks on earth. Uh, he was here long before us and he'll, he'll be here long after we're gone from this world. Uh, Revelation 22 verse 13. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And Jesus Christ himself says in John chapter 8 verse 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. So, we've talked about the rock. But in that passage we read at the start, we heard about the earth and the earthly things that people build their lives upon, the earthly foundation. So what do people build their houses upon outside the Lord? And again, I've had a think about this. And this is based upon... I suppose the things I was building my life upon as a lost person for 21 years and from observing people for 23 years and seeing what they're building their lives upon right now. So the first thing I thought of was money, earning money and materialism in general. I think that is the major God in most people's lives. It's, it's their sole purpose of life. It's to accumulate things and to just consume and get more and more and more of things. We live in a capitalistic society, and this is what we're encouraged to do by everything, the TV, the internet, the media. And I've I listed a few things I've heard. I've heard just during my brief time on earth, I'll be happy when, I'll be happy when I buy that house, I get that car, I get that promotion, I buy these new things. It's, it's futile. Everything becomes obsolete. What a, what a, what a poor foundation to build your life upon, something that's Never going to satisfy you. First Corinthians chapter 7 verse 31. And they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. And that's what these people are building their lives upon, something that passes away. None of these things will satisfy you. Philippians chapter 3 verse 19. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. This is what the majority of people on this planet do. They just mind earthly things. They're so spiritually dead, they, they can't understand the things of the Lord because they're constantly minding just the temporal things here on earth. And it's sad, and it's, it's becoming worse and worse. You think about the state of this country, even... Even 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, people had a greater concern about their spiritual needs, but physical things in many people's lives seem to have replaced that, but we'll see, it makes a poor foundation. Luke chapter 12, verse 20, But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? Or who shall they be? (laughs) Shall they be your children's? Will they belong to the government? (laughs) Will they go back to the bank? And if you're going to leave all this stuff to your children, will it do them any good? You hear stories all the time of families falling out and things like that over inheritance and so on and so forth. And I don't know. It's a sad thought. Matthew chapter 6 verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. And there's a lot to unpack in this in this verse. <laughs> Moths, well, they'll consume your clothes. <laughs> rust <laughs> will consume your car. Thieves, they'll rob they'll rob your money. They'll rob things in your house. <laughs> they'll even rob you online. It's, you're not safe anywhere. It's uh, nothing safe, nothing sacred down here on earth. Ecclesiastes 5, uh, verse 10, and this is one that struck home with me quite a bit, really, because it's absolutely true. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also vanity. And I think for many people, they never really come to this thought, but 
when when is enough? How much is enough? When is it that you're satisfied? When is it that you've you've got enough of what you're looking for that you don't have to keep going on this on this on this hamster wheel of of stress and worry about money? When is enough? And we Christians need to watch out for this too. You, you may be saved, but watch what foundation you're building your life upon. First Timothy chapter 6 verses 9 and 10. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Not there it talks about the love of money. We need money, we need money to get by in life, it's just the way this world's set up. But as Christians, we're to make sure we don't love it. Ecclesiastes 5.15, as he came forth of his mother's womb, naked shall he return to go as he came, and shall take nothing of his labour, which he may carry away in his hand. Sad isn't it how so many people, they make <laughs> they make their careers their lives, and then at the end of it you've got to give it all away that was a key uh, realisation of truth I had before I got saved even as a lost person and it was deeply worrying to me without the Lord all, everything I do in life I'm going to have to leave it one day I'm going <laughs> you'll return naked First Timothy chapter 6 verse 6 but godliness with contentment is great gain and First Timothy chapter 6 verse 8 and having food and raiment let us be there with content all this marine life that's in trouble. You're increasing your knowledge, but you're increasing your sorrow. What can you do about it? What can you do about that? There's nothing you can do about that. It's the way this world's going. You have no solution. You, you, they think, they, they expect the best out of people. Oh, if we, if we all have a change of attitude about something, but no, we just read that the love of money is the root of all evil. People aren't going to change. I have hope. I, I know this world's going <laughs> to burn away one day. I, I, I know the Lord Jesus Christ and I know his word. But what hope do you have? You're putting your trust in men. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 16. For there is no remembrance of the wise more than of the fool forever, seeing that which now is in the days to come shall all be forgotten. And how dieth the wise man as the fool? In studying and academia and all this stuff, people spend their whole lives creating the theories, theory of relativity, theory of this, theory of that. That's all, that's all you can provide. But what happens when your theory gets disproven? Again, you, you get forgotten about. All your life's work was for nothing. You've just been made irrelevant. It's a poor foundation. A final thing, a final foundation people build their lives upon outside the Lord Jesus Christ is false religion, cults, false gods, good works, worship of science or pseudoscience. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 20 calls it opposition of science falsely so called. What does the Bible say about this? John chapter 8 verse 24. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins for if ye believe not that I am he ye shall die in your sins. It's as simple as that isn't it? <laughs> you try looking for God outside of his revealed word outside of the Lord Jesus Christ you won't find him you'll find deceit you'll find darkness and you'll find Satan <laughs> and you'll die in your sins. Deuteronomy 32 verse 31 for their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. What hope do they have? Their rock is not our rock. Our rock has promised us eternal life. Our rock has redeemed us. Our rock went to the cross for us and shed his precious blood for us to free us from the wages of sin. What can your gods do for you? So, We've had a look at what other foundations people choose to build their lives upon. So let's explore another part of uh, Luke chapter, uh, 
Luke chapter 6. What floods beat against our houses? And I had to think about this because this is sort of what the Lord's saying. There's many things that will beat against us as we go through our lives. And as Christians, if we're building our lives upon the Lord Jesus Christ, we ought to have a solid foundation. Now, I'm relatively young, I'm 23, and I haven't experienced all these things I'm going to talk about. Thank God for that. But I'll just list a few of these things off. I thought about diseases, sickness, and ill health. The losses of loved ones and those around us. Unemployment and rough times at work. Bankruptcy, debt, and financial woes. Coming to terms with with old age and failing health. Going through a divorce. Persecution for being a Christian. Problems with your children. Loneliness. And rejection. Worry, fear, and anxiety about the future. All these things be against us at times in our lives. Not all of them, I hope, I hope they don't, but many of them do. And they'll, t- they'll test, they'll test you. Now, how does the world, built on their earthly foundation, deal with these matters? Well, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, things I've thought about, but all these things, in essence, are Distractions, they, they, the, the lost people, they can't really deal with any of these things like we Christians can. They just, the, all these things I'm going to talk about are all just distractions from the, the reality of life. Uh, entertainment and other distractions. We live in a society that is obsessed with entertainment. Everybody wants to be entertained. You can, you can get every single film ever made now just on your TV like that for £10 a month or something like that. You know, you can listen to the entire world's volumes of music for, again, for another monthly subscription just in your pocket. People are obsessed. It's a distraction. Alcoholism, drug abuse, gambling, false religion, lust, spending money on frivolous things and getting into debt, philosophy, self-help books, living in denial, turning to crime, psychology and other vain sciences. But these things will never solve your problems. (laughs) They're not a solid foundation. And as such, the world is a horrible and ugly place to live in. It's full of death and leads many to hell. It's absolutely right. Now, how do we Christians weather our storms, having our houses built upon the solid foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, the Bible tells us to do a few things. Prayer and even fasting. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Trusting in the scriptures and God's promises to us save Christians. And being encouraged and edified by the stories and testimonies of brothers and sisters in Christ who have endured similar or worse hardships and with God's help have made it through to the other side. We had some new people, didn't we, last Sunday? And again, it's always an encouragement to hear other people's testimonies, how they've endured hardship, how they've gone through tough times, and how the Lord has helped them and taken them through. And again, it helps. We're all, we're all trying to go through this life together, and it is hard. It's hard. I've had times where I've really had a moan to the Lord. <laughs> I shouldn't moan. I'm very, very grateful for everything I've got. But life is hard, no matter where you are. It's we're not at home here, we want to go home, but for the time being it's a tough it's a tough slog we've got to deal with. So to finish, I've put together some useful scriptures to lean on when the flood waters of life begin to rise and beat against our houses, against our foundations. But if we lean on the Lord Jesus Christ, we will endure. Philippians chapter four verse nineteen. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Genesis 48, 15, and this stood out to me. And he blessed Joseph and said, God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day. Luke chapter 12, verse 6 and 7. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And not one of them is forgotten before God. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, 
ye are of more value than many sparrows. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Luke chapter 12 verse 27 and 28. Consider the lilies how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothe the grass which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? Luke twelve twenty four twenty five. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn. And God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? And this speaks to me volumes, because I think on things and stew on things, and I don't always lean on the Lord as I should. So it's good to hear these things. Psalm 23, verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. And Matthew 28, verse 20, the latter part of that verse. I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. I take great comfort in the promises the Lord has given us in his scripture. And we're so blessed and privileged to have them. The world has nothing, <laughs> has nothing to, to lean upon that will truly hold, that will truly support them like the Lord Jesus Christ will. And it's sad. And as such, it's important that we try and get the gospel out to as many people as possible who are struggling just, just to get through life, just making it through each day. So a few things to take away from today's sermon. It's to be wise. It's to build upon the solid foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Obviously, if you listen to this and you're not saved, please trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Come to him as a sinner and believe upon the things he's done for you. Believe the gospel and get saved. So be wise, build upon the solid foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ and not upon the earthly passing things of this life. It's all too easy to get so entangled with the things of this life. In, in politics, they call it going native. It's when you forget who you belong to and it's so easy to get sucked into the world, but don't because it's passing, everything is. And as well, life is so fragile. And this is a really sobering thought I was having the other day. I was thinking a bit about my future and you know what's going to happen, the state of the country, the, everything. And you realise that every single thing in our lives hangs by a thread. And the Lord is in control of each of those threads. Your health, for example, could go like that. You know, you, the people you love, they're here today, gone tomorrow. Your job, you, I don't know what could happen. You could end up homeless like any other person. It's Everything hangs by a thread. So, trust the Lord. He is in control. And thank Him for every, everything He blesses you with. Every little thing. And give Him all the praise and glory for every good thing that comes our way. He is the Lord. And... We own everything. So let's finish in prayer.